What's up? This is Lucky with the Lucky Loco Show. Thank you. Hit that subscribe and like comment. What's up, everybody? It's Lucky Loco with the Lucky Loco Show. Today, I'm going to talk about a Canadian doing time in American system. Okay. So I get out here, I'm a young kid, I'm out here doing my stuff, and I get caught up for some bud. So I get caught up, this is like, man, this is 90s out here in Colorado. Never, I've been in the uh, Canadian uh, system, not as much as, as I was out here. But, you know, as a Canadian, you think of movies like um, Blood In, Blood Out, American Me, just all these horrible movies, you know, you sit and get in there like, God damn, these motherfuckers better not, you know? So anyways, this is what's come to mind. So I get in there. I get into Pueblo County Jail. So I get in there. There's a lot of fucking activities going on in that motherfucker, man. And a lot of stuff for the culture that I really don't know too much about. But I do know about standing your ground. So if anybody fucks with you, you know, but I already built up a reputation out on the streets. So I run into this dude that owes me money. Pretty big black dude, man. Go in there, you know, he comes in <clears throat> and I was just like, hey, man, you know, what's up? You know, people are kind of tripping out because I'm just a young kid. I'm like, hey, man, I'm going to need that money. And he gets on the phone. He's like, hey, you know, the money gets on my books. So... People kind of tripping out on that because I'm talking different. <clears throat> you know, just like the <clears throat> Canadian War Stories guy, you hear the difference of how Canadians talk to Americans. So people are tripping out, you know, uh, thinking that they can talk to me some type of way. And the one thing, America, please do understand that Canadians do have hands. So if you ever watch like anything that like sport wise, hockey, for instance, what do they do besides, you know? You know, besides bust each other up, but they fight. So we're pretty seasoned at it. So don't get it twisted. Don't think that, yo, well, Canadians is now, dude. Uh, but anyways, this is the idea. I'm just giving you a little gist of what I'm going through and just a little background of Canadians. So I get in there and I, I run into people like, uh, uh, the dude that did the, like a double shooting in Pueblo and you know, he's, he, I think he, I met him, I seen him in jail, I see him in the prison yard, but yeah, I see him in there. There's, uh, there's another dude. He was like a black serenio dude from California and you know, you just run into all these people that had me on like the, the fourth floor. Ooh. So that was like the thing that the guards did to scare the inmates. Ooh, we're going to send you to fourth floor. <laughs> This is back in the 90s stuff, man, back out there in Pueblo, Colorado, man. So, you know, you get into fights. Like, fights are going to happen. You get, you know, there's a lot of things I had to learn while I was in there, too, because there's different rules, different strokes for different folks, man. So I get into the unit, you know, I do my time. Uh, I'm in there getting, you know, caught up. Uh, I accidentally reach over a tray, to grab the salt and pepper. I was like, hey, grab that salt and pepper. And dude grabs my hand and yank, yank it away. I was like, man, fuck you, dude. And he goes, ah, fuck you. He said, don't you ever reach over my tray. I was like, man, whatever, bro. You know where my, you know, you know where my, you know where my cell's at, whatever. And uh, he came over and he apologized. He's like, you didn't punk me out, nothing. He goes, I'm going to school you on some shit that goes on in here. He's like, you don't ever reach over another man's tray in here. That's, we only get, Three meals in here, if you're poor like me, and people will trip out, you know, who knows what you have on your arm, I follow my food, and do you want to be, you know, and when he broke it down to me, it made sense, man, because I was just a young punk and didn't understand what was going on, and, you know, as, you know, as the career went on, like, you know, from, you know, getting in and out, in and out of county jail, and Pueblo County Jail will, will um, We'll school you on some stuff, man. There's a lot of good people in there, man. You know, it sounds weird, but yeah, there's a lot of good people, a lot of good, you know, convicts that will school you on your way to, you know, they just give you the heads up of what to expect when you go to prison. So, you know, as I was in and out of county jail, just a bunch of stupid little stuff like bar fights and, you know, I was just a kid, a reckless kid. So I was always in and out of county jail, just doing 
doing the most. Like if anybody <clears throat> challenged me, I was always ready to get down. So that, uh, that caused a lot of friction too. So, but as a person, as a Canadian, I'm getting off topic as a Canadian in the system. It really, really, it was scary, bro. I ain't gonna lie. Like, you know, like I said, you think of these fucking movies and you think, oh, you know, something's gonna, you know, just all that, that stupid prison shit that Hollywood um, blows out of proportion. I mean, don't get me wrong. It does happen in there. But, you know, as long as you go in there, you show heart, you show that you're not a punk. You know what I mean? You don't let anybody talk to you any type of way. Uh, you definitely, you know, don't let people, you know, not pay you. You know, that's another thing. You stay off the tables if you can't pay because you're going to, you know, the white other person may feel, hey, I got the numbers. I don't have to pay you. Then guess what? You're going to have to fight that dude and fight his homies too. But sometimes he's like, hey, man, you were on the, you know, if they're convicts that are in there. They'll tell me, hey, man, you, you gotta, you know, you gotta pay homie or, or you're just gonna have to fight him. So, you know, so, but there's a lot of, um, that's what took for me. I was in there, you know, you see a lot of fights, you see a lot of stuff going on. There's, uh, you know, you hear people on the streets being like the baddest gangsters in on the streets. And then as soon as they get into county jail, they get checked in, like you know, what's up, Mr. You know, Mr. Hardcore, whatever, man, you know, I never really ever portrayed myself as hardcore, man. So it was always like, I keep, I keep doing me. I'm a hustler. Uh, just don't fuck with my paper and don't fuck with what, what I'm doing. Otherwise you're going to feel it. I mean, it was just, that's how, that's how my mentality was as a kid. So, you know, and it, and that reputation followed me all the way to prison. And I'll get into that later too. But as a Canadian man, there's definitely big differences. There's um, uh, more political, more like stick with your race, stick with your people. And a lot of people thought I was Chicano or, or Mexican. Um, even the Native Americans thought I was Mexican too. So, you know, they, they were like, hey man, you know, I'm Native American. They're like, hmm. You know, kind of laugh at me, but you know, as you as as you learn, you get in there, you just do your thing. You know, uh, I'll get into more stories of, but yeah, a Canadian doing time in the American system. I'll even get into the prison yard stuff too. So, you know, this isn't going to be a prison channel. I'll tell you that. I just want you to know who I am and where I came from. To where I'm at now in life. Spiritually, physically, and emotionally involved in being an entrepreneur. You know what I mean? It's definitely can be done if, you know, uh, just got to get around around the right mind, mindset, man. But I'll get into that too. I just want to tell a quick story of a Canadian doing time in the American system. <laughs>